Hi, my name is Neo Tote, one of your TAX 1501 lecturers, and I'm going to be taking you through question two. This question deals with fringe benefits. So let's go straight to the required and see what we've been asked. Calculate the cash equivalent of each of the above fringe benefits and the taxable portion of any allowances for 2014 year of assessment. Clearly state whether the amount you calculated should be included in taxable income or deducted from taxable income. Make sure that you understand what the required is asking you. There are two parts to the required. You need to calculate and you need to state whether an amount is included in taxable income or deducted from taxable income. So make sure that you answer both parts to earn the maximum marks. So now let's go to the information in the question. The first one deals with residential accommodation. It says Raymond is employed by Mobile LTD. Mobile LTD owns a number of houses and Raymond has the right to use one of the houses owned by the company. The house has three rooms, a kitchen, a lounge, and a bathroom. The house was furnished by the employer. Raymond occupied the house for a full year and paid 150 per month to Mobile LTD to occupy the house. He also paid his own electricity and water. Raymond's remuneration factor for the previous year was 210 and for the 2014 year of assessment was 240,000. Please take note of the information given to you. Note the number of rooms that the house has. Note whether the house is furnished or not. Note the period that Raymond occupied the house. So now let's go and attend the question. Question two. Part A, residential accommodation. This question is for six marks. Remember, when calculating residential accommodation, there's a formula that you need to apply. It is A minus B times C over 100 times D over 12. Note what each component is. Your A will be your remuneration factor for the previous year. And your B is your tax threshold. Note that this figure changes every year. So for 2014 year of assessment, it's 67, triple one. And your C, this is where the information that you're given in the question becomes very important. You should note that you can either use 17, 18, or 19. Know when to use each of these figures. So in the question, the house has a couple of rooms. It has three bedrooms, a kitchen, four, five. It has about six rooms, and it is furnished by the employer, and he also pays his own electricity. So in this instance, your C will be 18. And then D is the period of months in which, in which he used the house, which is 12. So your answer will be 210,000 less 67 triple 1 times 18 over 100 times 12 over 12, which should give you 25,720. Note, very important, that your taxable portion of a fringe benefit should exclude whatever the employee paid. The employee in this instance, who is Raymond, paid 150 per month. So you will say employee payment, which is 150 per month times 12 months, which should give you 1,800. Then your taxable portion will be 23,920. Very important, the second part of the required asks you whether the amount will be included or excluded. 
Therefore, the taxable portion will be included in taxable income. Now, let's move on to B. B deals with holiday accommodation. It's two marks, which should take you two minutes. Mavis is an employee of Southern Star Limited. The company owns a very popular beach hotel. The rate at the hotel is 950 per room per night, with a maximum of four people per room. Mavis, her husband, and their son made use of the hotel at no cost to them for six nights during the school holidays. Note here that Mavis did not pay anything, therefore you cannot deduct anything from the taxable portion. So now the rate, very important also, is per room, not per person. So the room was 950, this is your holiday accommodation. The room was 950 per night and they spent six nights at the hotel, times six which should give you 5,700. Very important again, included in taxable income. Next point, part C, low interest, low interest rate loan, three marks, four minutes. Kelly received a loan of 12,000 from her employer on 1 March 2012. The interest on the loan is 4% per annum. On 1 March 2013, Kelly repaid 4000 to her employer. The official interest rate is 6.5% per annum. Remember, the taxable portion of the low interest rate loan is based on the amount that the employee owns, oh, sorry, that the employee owes at the end of the year. So, part C, low interest rate loan. What does the employee owe the employer at the end of the year? It's your 12,000 less 4,000, which should give you 8,000 rand. The taxable portion is the difference between what the employee is being charged and the official rate. So, the taxable portion will be 6.5% less 4.5% times 8,000, which should give you an amount of 200 rand. Very important again, included in taxable income. Now we will move over to part D, right of use of motor vehicle. Mudise, this is asked for seven marks. Mudise had the right to use a company-owned vehicle for the full year. The company purchased the vehicle for 260,000 VAT included. Also included in this amount are finance charges of 23,000. Take note of why you given this information. The vehicle was subject to a maintenance plan, also very important information at the time of acquisition. Mudisa kept a logbook and the following was recorded. Business travel, 6,000 kilometers. Total travel during the year, 16,000 kilometers. Okay, now let's attempt this part. Part D, right of use of motor vehicle. Very important point, you should start with your determined value of the car. You should go back to your study material and learn exactly what's included and what's excluded from the determined value of the car. In our question, the car was purchased for 260,000. You should know that finance charges are excluded from the determined value. Therefore, this should give you a value of 260 uh, less, 
can find you on this room. 237,000. Note that the vehicle was subject to a maintenance plan. Therefore, you will use 3.25%. Always know when to use the 3.5% and when to use the 3.25%. You should now get an amount of 92 430. Always remember that you need to take out the business travel. So let's the business travel. Which is your 92, 430 times 6,000 over the 16,000 kilometers. Let's move over to the next page. Uh, let's just carry the balance forward of 92, 430. So the answer that you got when you divided 92, 430 with an amount of 6,000 over 16,000 would be 34,661. Therefore, 92, 430 less 34661 should give you 57769. This amount is also included in taxable income. Now we are done with our right of use of motor vehicle. Let's move over to the next fringe benefit, which is your Travel allowance. This is in fact an allowance, not a fringe benefit. Maggie works for a consulting company and her work requires her to travel to clients during her, using her own vehicle. The determined value of your vehicle is 465000 very important, VAT included. She receives a travel allowance of 10000 per month. Maggie did not keep accurate records. This is also very important. I'll explain to you just now of her actual expenses. Her logbook indicated the following. Total kilometers traveled 60,000 kilometers. Private kilometers traveled 32,000. Now let's go back to that point of keeping accurate logbook. If, you, if an employee or a taxpayer does not keep an accurate logbook of their expenses, they can only use the deemed um, costs. They cannot use the actual because they didn't keep record. Okay, let's now attempt the travel allowance. Once again, we are going to start with the determined value. Note that the determined value for both right of use of motor vehicle and travel allowance is the same. So in our question, we have a cost of 465,000, that included. We do not need to exclude anything because there was nothing that, should be, that shouldn't be in here that was included. Now we need to go to our schedules to find out our costs. The first one is the fixed cost. Note that these schedules will be provided to you in the exam and you will use the value or the determined value of the car to find the relevant costs for that particular allowance. So the fixed costs per the table will give you 118078. You need to, to divide this by the total kilometers traveled, not just the private or the business. You use the total kilometers traveled by the employee during the year. So in this case, he traveled a total of 60,000 kilometers. And then you times by 100 in order to convert this amount into cents because the fuel cost and the maintenance costs are all in cents. Therefore, you will get an amount of 196,8. The fuel cost of 147,7 cents. Sorry, all these are cents. And then maintenance cost of 
of 70,50. All these amounts you should be able to get from your schedule provided. The total of these will give you 415,0 cents. The 415 that you have calculated, you will use to calculate the business cost. Now we need to determine our business travel. We were given a total kilometers traveled figure of 60,000 kilometers and the private were 32,000 kilometers. Therefore, your business travel is 28,000 kilometers. So now, the business cost will be 28,000 kilometers times 415,0 cents times 100. We're multiplying by 100 because we want to convert the cents from cents to rents. So the answer that you will get here will be your 116,200. Therefore, the taxable portion, remember, this person got a travel allowance of 10,000 per month. Therefore, for the year, it will be times 12, which will be 120,000. Less business cost that we calculated now of 116,200. The answer that you should get from here will be your 3,800. Once again, included in taxable income. You will wonder why every time you were asked to indicate whether an amount is included or excluded. The main thing was for you to know that the taxable portion of a fringe benefit or an allowance is always included in taxable income.